well seated. So welcome. And a pleasure to have you here, Reverend Joe. Thank you. Thank you for honoring our invitation. And um, if you know what they want to to meet us here, I know Reverend Joe had um, a program he was supposed to handle today, but he left it to be with us here. So please, we appreciate you so much. We are so grateful. You're welcome. And Dr. Ada, her own story, <laughs> she had a nice video. And she came all the way from Oweri this morning to meet us, met sanitation on the way. But we thank God that she made it. Thank you very much, Ma, for coming here. Okay, so I'll start from the ladies. Dr. Ada, please, we'd just like to know a little bit about you. I know you have six daughters. I know you are married to a pastor, but just a little about you, your inspiration, what led you into marriage ministry? Just a minute. I'm a graduate of French studies. And then I've been married for like 40 years now. This wow. year was our 40th. Year. <laughs> so, we're into the for the first year of our marriage. You don't look it. Yes. We have six daughters, like you heard. Five of them are now married. Yes. The first one is 40 years, and the last one is 25 years old. Yes. And we have uh, seven grandchildren now. Yes. The first one is 16 years old, and there's the eighth one on the way. <laughs> we have been so blessed. Yes. Actually, it's not like, I think my ministry uh, to marriages and families was just born, it, was, it just happened, okay. you know, it wasn't like I desired it, you know, but one thing I know is that I have a passion for women, and you can't talk about marriage without talking about women, mm -hmm. I have a passion to see women know who they are. I have a passion to see women stand strong because the women's assignment is too great. It's about destiny, it's about life, including that of the man and the children. So I think it's out of that passion. I found myself talking about it. I found myself writing books. And then, you know, and I've seen my marriage work and I've seen the products of our marriage, especially on our children. And I believe that it can work for anybody and everybody. Mm -hmm. But that's why I started the Family Life University. Wow. Because I found out that marriage is the only profession in quotes that people don't go to school yeah. to get a training for. Yeah. Somebody wants to be a doctor, he goes to university seven years, then receives a certificate of practice. The marriage, they give you a certificate before you start practicing. Mm -hmm. And then people just get into marriage because they believe it's time to marry. And I believe that's why we have so many quack husbands and quack wives, raising <laughs> quack children, who will produce the quackness, you know, it's a vicious cycle, but things can change. Yeah. And that's why a program like this is very, very important. Yeah. Thank you. I had a chat with a friend just this afternoon. I was telling her that there's no graduation in marriage. Mm -hmm. I've never seen any marriage where they wear gown and say, okay, you have graduated mm -hmm. for marriage. So it's a very unique it is. Unique it is. university. It is. It yeah. Is. So thank you very much, ma. Yeah. Reverend Joe, um, so we just know a little about that you're married with children. We would like to know more about you. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, thank you for this initiative. Mm -hmm. I am usually excited when I see people come up with whatever that will improve the home front. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Dr. Uh, Ezeka. When I had the number of years she's married, and then passion about marriage, I got excited. I thought I'm the only person in the whole world that's excited about marriage. Now, I I began to pastor a church in the early 90s, and then along the line, 
God began to impassion my heart about families, probably because of the kind of background I had. I had a mother. My mother went to be with the Lord. She was just buried last Wednesday at the age of 94. But my dad and my mother didn't have a good marital relationship at the beginning when I was in primary school. My mother was always, my father was always beating my mother. And then when I was small, I told myself that I will never beat my wife. I didn't know what wife was, so, mm-hmm. but I said I will never beat my wife when I married. Coincidentally, when I got married, I married the kind of woman you cannot beat. <laughs> there are some wives you can beat. I if you married, you married the daughter of a military officer. <laughs> he knows how to do taekwondo and um, karate. Yeah. You respect yourself. You respect your <laughs> so, but on a serious note, I said I'm not going to beat my wife. And then somehow, my first brother got married a year after the wife went to their place. They later reconciled and came back. My two elder sisters, I have elder sisters that are all grandmothers. They are all ministry, in ministry. Their first, first marriages. So they came back and remarried. My second eldest brother married after having three children. The wife, they had issues, she left. Eight years she came back. I got married. One week after my marriage, I told my wife, don't go to work. I'm introducing myself. Yes. Very <laughs> nice. I told my wife, don't go to work. That I don't want you to work in that place again. She said, why? I said, I don't want you to work again. I wanted to exercise my, my authority as a, as a man. Then number two, she, when I came back from my own work, I noticed that she went to work. Because we were just alone in that children flat. I said, sweet. By the way, I come around, sweet. Some husband called their wife, they can leave. <laughs> Some called their wife, whatever the, the situation brings. Now I said, sweet, you went to work. He said, I said, okay, carry your bag, take your Bible, and your night gown. To your MD's house, that way you wow. sleep this night. This I will not enter your house. She thought I was joking. I got serious. She picked her bag as well, going to the gate. I looked through the window, saw her crying and going to the gate. I remembered mm. that the dragon, the, 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 the serpent, you do not kill in Genesis. Before you get between Malachi and Revelation, it becomes a dragon. And my own serpent, my family serpent, I've killed it in my first year in the university when I met the Lord. I ran to the gate and pulled my wife back. I said, you are not getting anywhere. It is me you disobeyed. It is me you insulted. Come back. I didn't want a repetition of what happened in my family line. So my wife came back. We sorted the stuff out. That's the closest we've ever got into disagreement and quarrel of that magnitude in 20, about 25 years of marriage. Now, since then, my heart has been that marriage must work. It must work. I don't teach. I don't mm. teach normal marriage teachings. That's why I got excited when I was learning her talking. Pastors preach husbands love your wives. Wives submit to your husband. I don't preach it. That's not what God called me to do. I'm an intentional coach. I'm not a counselor. We tell you what will make your marriage work. If it is, it works. That's right. No struggle about it. Let me tell you also, there are no wrong wives, there are no wrong husbands. There are only bad wives and bad husbands. Mm-hmm. If you know English language. So, <laughs> what, I, what I do personally is to build the individuals that build the marriage, right. that build the family, that build the church, that build the society. So when individuals get themselves right, marriage will be right. Yes. So I teach outside the box. So I know some after some time pastoring the church, God now said, leave church and go to the body of Christ and make marriages work. So we began to write books. We have written quite a lot of books and began to do this ministry. We go from one place to the other. Can you imagine somebody who buried mother on Wednesday and is here teaching about marriage? Mm-hmm. That's our passion. Tomorrow morning, I'm teaching somewhere as soon as I leave here. I'm giving teaching over here. So that's my passion to see marriages work and then it will work and see church strong. That's my passion. Then, number two, I believe that a bad, every bad husband has a little inheritance from the father. Bad fathers produce bad husbands. 
bad fathers will do bad husbands. Bad mothers will do bad wives in their children. So if you check out if your child is having an issue, they might take your life. So one of the ways I check my life today is I look at my boys that are growing up. I look at their values, their choices and decisions. I look at myself and the people that package myself. So I came here to talk to fathers how we can model our children to become choice husbands in the future. We are in the first reading. Wow, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay, so we've got we've talked about what really inspired you. And based on the topic, I'm sure you'd have been wondering about the topic. So what are your thoughts on this topic, the impact of parenting on relationships? Just what comes to your mind first? Initially, when I saw that topic, <clears throat> I, I thought well, relationships was, you know, all relationships. But when you introduced the meeting, you made it very clear, mm. you know, that about our marriages, so how we can raise our children in a way that it doesn't put pressure on our marriages. And I understood. As a matter of fact, the most important relationship after your relationship with God is your relationship with your spouse. If that doesn't work, nothing else will work. Mm. I'm telling you the truth. Marriage is the foundation of every other form of success in life. It does not matter that the world has given us other kind of values that have consumed us and we keep pursuing them because when we when it gets to brass tacks you will find out that the core issue is about your marriage i told you that when i saw what our marriage did to our children i knew that you can't raise good children without a good marriage sure you sure. can't you can't i wrote something here let me just read it is a teaching i gave at a, a parenting uh, conference and I said here, yeah, I said, I'm sure you're aware that we live in a very negative and dangerous world, don't you? Mm -hmm. A world where the devil is very active, using whosoever and whatsoever to perpetuate his stealing, killing and destroying ministry. He's ready to pervert anything to fulfill his evil intentions. Mm -hmm. I said, and then I said, may I say this? Giving your children an education, a good home, good food, and all the comforts of this life is not the same as raising them. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Did you hear what I said? Giving your children an education, a good home, good food, and all the comforts of this life is not the same as raising them. It is because of this misconception that many parents have substituted parenting for the pursuit of money by all means. Many parents are hurting their marriages, they are hurting their families, they are hurting their children in their pursuit of money. I know I'm talking to parents in this place tonight. Things will change. God will exceed the expectation for this, for this meeting. Amen. 40 years from now, people will still be sharing the testimony from me. Of it. Mm. I think because when it goes well with our marriages, it will go well with every other thing. We cannot have strong people, a strong nation without strong people. Mm. And we can't have strong people without strong families. 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 And the bottom line is this we cannot have strong families without strong marriages. Yep. Mm. We can't. We can't. And I said, yeah, you are not a good parent because you gave your children the best education or because you are able to provide them the necessities of life. You are a good parent primarily because you are there for your children to model life, to model character and responsible citizenship to them. It's not a problem at all to raise children. Whether it's in the 18th century, 19th century, 20th century, or 21st century. People like to blame 21st century, blame internet, blame everything. But even in the olden days, there were challenges of their times. The people still raised quality children. 
So 21st century is not our problem. Our marriages are our problem. You can't have quality children in spite of your marriage. There's a connection. You see, I'm saying this to get to where we are going. You see, because you cannot separate parenting from marriage, for our marriages. If you're not a good parent, I mean, if you're not a good husband, you can't be a good father. If you're not a good wife, you can't be a good mother. Take it up, take it down. It's still all about our marriages. It's still all about our marriages. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Now, how can we parent in a way that it doesn't put pressure on our marriages? The important thing is, do you even know how important your marriage is? Because when purpose is not known, abuse is inevitable. When you know how important your marriage is to even those children you're parenting, you will settle down and work on your marriage. Because a good marriage will produce quality children. I'm telling you about my own family. I'm telling you the truth. Many of us have neglected our marriages. As I'm talking, I just feel like, I feel like shedding tears. Because the way, what is happening in marriages today is alarming. And whether you like it or not, it's affecting the quality of children we are producing. Mm. It is. It's not education that makes children. Schools don't raise children. Children are raised in the home. And the home is not the posh furniture. It's not the AC. It's not the mansion. The home is the atmosphere created by the quality of your marriage. Where your marriage stands for the relationship between you and your wife. If there's nothing going on between you and your wife, you don't have a marriage. You're just living together. It is the marriage that creates the atmosphere called home. And if that atmosphere is toxic, you will raise dysfunctional children. Children who will tomorrow become the worst husbands. Schools don't raise children. Children are not raised in schools. They are raised in the home. So you know what you're doing. You know that you invest in your home and in your family. Invest much more in your marriage. I want to believe God that something will happen to you in this mm -hmm. meeting tonight. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Thank you, ma'am. Reverend Jay, we have single parents, so they have children. So some can be to the loss of a spouse, and then some might be a divorce.